Well, hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I'm on Cape Cod actually, and I am out here with my family and my son is sleeping. So we still get that two hour nap. He's about two years and nine months old, but he still does a solid two hour nap in the middle of the day. He's also been feeling kind of sick. So anyway, I'm taking advantage of this opportunity to head to a spot I've been to maybe one or two times, but I've always enjoyed, and that's the Wellfleet location for the National, well, for the Massachusetts Audubon Society. And it's a protected area near Wellfleet on the Outer Cape, um, great spot, and it is uh, one of my favorite places to go. So that's where I'm heading to right now, and we'll see what we can see there and, and see if we can get some photos. We've got like this kind of pine, um, I think it's called pin pine, it's got this very kind of distinct Cape Cod smell, if you ask me, um, where everything kind of smells a little bit like pine, a little bit like ocean, and it's just, I don't know, very Cape, very Cape Cod in the best possible way. So we're just arriving now and we'll see what we can find. So this is a spot that I discovered, I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago when I was out here with my family. And we actually joined the Massachusetts Audubon Society because we wanted to explore this space. And it's a pretty cool spot. Um, you can hear the birds all around. There's this salt marsh and um, it, it attracts all these different shorebirds. So it's a really cool spot to go and photograph. It's also just this, part of the cape that's a really nice spot so it's the outer part of the cape in wellfleet as you're going up towards provincetown and i think by my money it's probably the best place to be on the cape you get the natural environment of like dunes and uh, wildlife and a lot of wetlands and then the ocean on the other side very accessible it's a nice thing about the cape here is it's pretty narrow so you can be on the bay side and kind of the um, area here where there's um, a lot of uh, uh, shorebirds kind of like in this more sheltered bay area. And then you can cross over to the other side of the Cape in 15 minutes or so. And you're on the other side of the Cape at the ocean. You see these massive dunes and it's really cool. So I love this area of the Cape. It's, it's really a nice spot to visit. So I'm not exactly fashionable out here. But the reason why is because the ticks are really bad this time of year. So we went on a walk yesterday and I pulled off, I kid you not, six ticks off of my dog. And I actually found a seventh one today when um, I was looking at where she was sleeping last night. So definitely don't want to mess around with the ticks this time of year. And um, I've got DEET on <laughs> as well as the socks tucked into my pant legs and I'm trying my best to avoid getting ticks this, this time. So we'll see if that's successful, but that's what I'm doing here. Okay, so I kind of went on this route, which was um, as you kind of come into the Audubon uh, location, the Wellfleet area, I went right. But now I'm actually doubling back and I'm going back on the same trail. And I'm gonna go out along um, the coast of the bay here. So I'll show you, um, you know, I'm on this trail right here but it actually goes, you can keep going kind of out to this area here. And I think this will be kind of a cool area to, to check out. So I'm gonna head that way and probably the whole thing is, I don't know, maybe the whole thing is something like, uh, maybe like an hour of walking. I think there's something like five miles of trails here. So it's not like, that crazy or overwhelming but there's a couple different nooks you can do and that's the other thing about nature walking like this with photography you know it's not a five mile run or hike even it's like a five mile walk <laughs> where you can just double back over the same areas you go at a much slower pace and that's something i really like about wildlife photography and bird photography in particular is it's a much slower pace and you're very present in your environment and i know that sounds very like new agey and kind of hokey but I actually think it's something that's legitimate. I mean, like when you're sitting here and you're um, 
you know, walking on this trail, when you're walking on the trail, I'm observing everything, right? Like I'm taking in kind of all of the sights and sounds and looking for birds. And, and I find that by doing that, I'm more present in the environment and I'm observing everything and I'm listening to everything. I'm looking for everything. And I just get a much more rewarding experience than just blazing through a trail and, and going for the glory of kind of completing the trek, which is how I feel when I'm hiking like a 4,000 footer in New Hampshire or something like that, where the goal is really to, uh, to accomplish that hike and finish it. Whereas here, I think the goal is really to like have the experience of being present in the environment, even if that means I'm going at a slower pace. But it also means you get more bang for your buck for every mile that you walk because you're going at a much slower pace and you're getting a lot more out of it. So I don't know, it's a mixed bag. It's a different type of experience, but alas, this type of environment kind of begs that slower pace and more experiential um, hike or walk than it is uh, about kind of the end goal of completing the activity. Well, I'm doing this walk back to do this other leg here and I just came across a Canada goose couple and it looks like there's some goslings, which is really cute. I don't know if you can see here, but if you look, it's a little hard to tell. I'm going to try to capture this with my larger camera just so you can see it, but it's kind of cute and it's this time of year when they're just everywhere and it's, um, it's really a lot of fun. Oh wow, there's a hawk right here. Oh. False. Looks like turkeys. Just a couple of young turkeys here. They're everywhere in Massachusetts. <laughs> we see them. We really do see them everywhere. It's kind of insane. Where I live in Brookline, they're just always on the street blocking traffic. So it's kind of fun to see them, but I don't know, it's kind of hearkening back to the pilgrim days. So as I've gotten more into bird photography, I've started to appreciate bird blinds, which some of these Audubon societies have, um, locations have set up. So this is actually one of the locations here you can see. It's basically like a house <laughs> that's sort of set up here. And um, you can go in. It's just kind of a cool environment, very kind of fun. But the truth is, more often than not, there's nothing to see at these bird buying locations. I just don't feel like I end up seeing that much. And it's probably because I need to wait a lot longer before anything shows up that's worth checking out. But anyway, we'll just hang out here for a little bit and see if we can find anything. The location of this one is a, um, the location of this one is a like lake basically um, and it's set up so that you have um, three different sides of view so I guess if a bird kind of comes in from the side you'd be able to pick it up and uh, and watch as it kind of lands in the water body in front of us here I'll show you kind of what you got so there are these view kind of panels on the side and uh, you can see kind of outside. And then this is really what you're looking at here. So there's kind of like a nice, I don't know, little pond here. It's a nice breeze going on. It's about 70 degrees. It's just kind of a nice place to hang out, but I'm not sure we're actually gonna see anything here. I'll just hang out and see what happens. Okay, well, I'm gonna give up <laughs> and go on my way, but I think uh, what ends up happening here is I always end up doing these trips when I'm taking time away from my family and that means I've got like an hour and a half to see birds and I just rather walk my you know a little bit and stretch my legs and maybe catch some birds along the way than I would sit and stake out a hide for three hours to try to see a bird so I'm gonna get on my way and see what's next oh I hear a uh, woodpecker you can hear it in the distance there and there's definitely like a ton of blackbirds. Anyway, nice day so far. Well, I don't know if you can hear me, but um, there's kind of a lake here, but there are all these like crabs, which is kind of cool. So I was just walking across here and it's low tide 
And so um, these crabs have kind of surfaced and there's like a clash of the titans. They're using their single claws to battle each other, but it's like in slow motion. So it's just this kind of hilarious um, territorial battle amongst a couple different crabs. Anyway, things you see when you're just walking around a nature walk. coming up on some high tide markers. Always good to remember that. <laughs> These are actually, um, that's really cool actually. You can see, I think that's the year, so 2063. So these are, these are climate change focused. So I guess that one there is 2063. That'll be the average high tide with sea level rise. This area is really low lying. So just a couple feet of elevation change and you end up with a huge increase in tide levels. Yeah, so these are indicating where high tide will be. And you can tell that because if you look here, the current high tide is kind of marked by, by all of this um, straw that you can see kind of like push back. These are the grasses that have been kind of brought back with the high tide. And where are we? Well, we're right at the average high tide for 2038. And here's the average high tide for 2025, which is basically now. So yeah, what we're looking at here is all of this will be underwater all the way back to there um, with climate change. Well, these walks are I guess ostensibly wildlife walks for me, but I guess I'm kind of fallen into a pattern here where I go on these two hour walks during my son's bed, bedtime or his nap time. And I just kind of go out and I walk around with my camera, you know, my trusty camera on my side and I just go around and I take pictures. And more often than not, I'll see something, some bird, you know, I can refine my technique and get a shot of something. Today it's been blackbirds and catbirds and sparrows and maybe a couple plovers mixed in with the bunch, but not really about like searching out a subject. More for me just about being out in nature and enjoying walking around, being alone, having some space to just kind of think and uh, just like be, be in nature. And that's what these walks, particularly during the pandemic have been for me, just an opportunity to get out and to explore and to think. And, you know, that's fine. It's not about um, anything else other than that. And I think that's worthy of a couple hours of time anyway. And it keeps me sane and helps me kind of like clear my head and be productive during the week and feel like I'm, you know, being alive and enjoying being alive. And I think that's really, for me, kind of the crux of it. For, for me, having a kid was tough. Um, you know, as somebody who likes to travel, the combination of having a kid and COVID have really meant that I just haven't been out there, you know, living my, my life in the same way that I did before. And that's been hard. It's been hard to swallow and process. And over time, my son's two years and nine months, almost three years, you know, I've gotten better and better about seeking out the time to myself when I can have it, like times like this, or as he's gotten older and I feel more comfortable traveling, I've been traveling more, you know, occasionally for an overnight going camping or something like that. But this has been a hard period and it's this type of nature walk that's been um, cathartic to me in that way. And I don't know why I'm sharing that, but I guess for what it's worth, that's my perspective. All right, well, that's what I got for you today. It's kind of wrapping up the two hour break and I'm heading back to my family and uh, we're gonna have some lunch, head down to P-Town, Provincetown, and uh, probably the Cape Cod National Seashore down there and do a nice family adventure and get dinner down there. So it should be a really good day, but most of all, you know, it feels good to have gotten in this couple hour break of some time alone to go take photos and, um, yeah, just get out in nature on this glorious weekend and beautiful day. So 
anyway, that's all I got. And I hope, hope you have a chance to get outside too. And, and more, more important than that, I hope you um, have a chance to engage in the activities that bring you joy and kind of help you relax. I think ultimately that's what nature photography and wildlife photography is for me. And with that, I'm going to sign off because there is a red crested woodpecker that is kind of at ground level, which is a little bit unusual here. So I'm going to try to get a photo. Be well, take care, and have a wonderful week. All the best.